so the uh, the legislation was passed in May of '08, and the tax uh, were, we started collecting the tax back in January of 2009. So it's been it collected for a little bit more than a year, bringing in about ten million dollars a year. <clears throat> ten million dollars. Yeah. A year. And now you you had, you'd said 120 million, then you went to 180 million. But that's not the number anymore. No, is it? that's that's just this is just the beginning <clears throat> of the story. Of course, right. uh, the Corps of Engineers um, started almost immediately started coming back with ever increasing cost estimates to the point where based it's on based upon uh, information they were collecting. They're doing soil borings to test the the quality of the ground underneath the levees, and and uh, you know it's one thing leads to another, and next thing you know, the estimates around five hundred million dollars. Uh, that's all. Which is uh, a ten mil you said ten million dollars a year <laughs> they're collecting. Right. That sounds about like fifty years. A lot of years, right. Yeah. Well and I mean of course the cost fifty years from now will be higher. Exactly. Um mm -hmm. and, and if so that fi even that five hundred million dollar estimate, you know, may not be accurate. It doesn't uh, fully include inflation and what other is things. it that they actually want to do physically with let's say Let's say that out of that $787 billion, somehow half a billion dollars fell into your lap. Mm -hmm. When you leave here, you know, you get a phone call, yeah, the money's there. Now what do you do? Well, I think you've got to understand a little bit how levies work. They're basically earthen embankments. Uh, you know, for the most part, we don't even know these things are there unless you go looking for them. Now, are they down, do they start from below ground level or are they just standing on uh, top of the ground? They basically stand on top of the ground. Uh, there are clay layers underneath, but basically they're earthen embankments. And the, you know, you have a couple of different problems with levees, uh, the most serious of which is called under seepage. It's when the water pressure builds up, when the water, is, water levels are very high up against the levee, mm -hmm. that water pressure pushes water under the levee. Where the dirt and the the real ground meet, right? And it it well, it comes underneath, and um, and which itself isn't a problem except when it starts carrying sand and soil under the levee and basically pulling soil out from under the levee mm -hmm. and weakening that foundation, and ultimately uh, it will collapse. Just like happened to, it, to the monarch, exactly. Levee. So, and this can happen very quickly. Uh, and you see pictures of uh, sand boils on the, you know, on TV when you have periods of Tell high water. Tell people what what a sand boil uh, is. A sand boil is basically that tunnel that comes under the levee when water is pushing its way under the levee and bringing up sand. Mm -hmm. And so you see this little cone that's uh, sort of like a little volcano. Um, and and tip, uh, typically there are ways of combating sand boils, uh, you know, on an, uh, an emergency basis when you're flood fighting, um, and to prevent them from getting any worse. So what you do uh, to combat this, uh, this under seepage problem, you can do a couple of different things. You can, the most expensive thing you can do is essentially put a vertical wall, either through the levee or uh, on the land side or the water side of the levee, uh, which prevents uh, water from pushing under the levee. Very costly, you've got to go all the way down to bedrock with a concrete-like material. And uh, this stretches how many miles? These, le these levee Alton systems are 64 Alton. miles. 64 miles. So, I mean, to do that would be, uh, you know. A lot. A, a lot of money, it, o almost incalculable. And uh, that's more than that runway at the airport. Yeah. So, uh, uh, you know, the other, other uh, solutions are you can uh, build what they call a sand berm, essentially pile a layer of sand a, you know, very a heavy layer of sand behind the levee mm -hmm. to push down on the ground to keep the water from, from pushing up. And, and the uh, more popular solution, I guess you could say, is to build something called relief wells. Essentially, it's a vertical pipe that goes down in the ground behind the levee and allows the water come up to come up in a controlled fashion without bringing the sand and soil Onto up. the dry side. Right, onto the dry side of the levee. And typically that water, uh, the water that comes up out of those relief wells is, is pumped back uh, into the river with a pump station uh, oh. or is allowed to pool behind the levee in a, in a controlled way. So those are the kinds of things you need to do. And obviously we think of height of the, of the levee being an issue, but in our case it really is not. The, these levees are really at the right height to protect actually against a, a 500 year flood. In the last 40 years, have they ever been topped? Uh, no. Right. 
Okay. No. Uh, in fact, since the 1940s when they've been built, there's really never been a failure uh, other than, than one in the 80s, which was really a maintenance problem of a, of a floodgate in, in the East St. Louis area. So, you know, the levees have pretty much stood the test of time mm -hmm. o over, those, uh, over that period of time. What is happening here, and the principal uh, cause of the FEMA and Corps of Engineer action is something called a design deficiency. These levees were built in the 1940s and then improved later on by the Corps of Engineers mm -hmm. uh, and designed according to standards in place at the time and then turned over to local levy districts to, to maintain. Uh, of course, standards have changed uh, over time as everything else, uh, improvements in engineering techniques and design techniques. And then Katrina uh, sort of sent shockwaves through the engineering community and, and how they design levees. So they uh, decided in the future they're going to increase the safety factor, the, the, basic, the, the margin of error you have in your design. Uh, so they've increased it from something like 1.3 to 1.6. So, of course, now you come back and you look at our levees, which has been which there. Which are designed to the standard uh, of the day. And uh, say, well, you, know, you no longer meet that standard. This is a design deficiency. Mm -hmm. uh, so nothing, uh, you know, one of the... Uh, one of the experienced people the Corps of Engineers uh, told me recently, you know, the risk has not changed. The risk is essentially the same as it was before, but our understanding of the risk has changed. So uh, all of these things contribute to a certain amount of skepticism about, uh, uh, about this issue and, and, you know, on the part of our elected officials, certainly back in 2007. Wait, there, the elected officials have skepticism about the thinking of the core and the changes in the design standards. That's correct. You know, back when this was announced, they said, well, wait a minute. Uh, first of all, these levees have protected us all this time, including in 1993. Um, you're telling us that this is a design deficiency, something that you, the federal government, built and designed. Uh, and so it's a design deficiency. It's really your, your, it's commentary on your own uh, on, on your own practice, and yet you're coming back to us and saying this is our problem to fix it. So, you know, there's there's some real uh, uh, issues there, public policy issues. I, I'm not sure I would call it that. It's just uh, it's you know no problem is ever simple as we mm -hmm. learn in, in a lot of in a lot of what we do here, um, and it is really a shared responsibility here. Do levies get old? I mean, it's not like it's not like the gates that can wear out mm -hmm. and need to be replaced. I mean, do the levees themselves get old, or I mean, once you pile all this dirt, it's going to just stay there and 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 not not move. I mean, uh, yeah, I understand the business about going underneath, mm -hmm. but if that's not happening, or or is that a function of age? The fact that water might travel underneath and create these sand boils. Yeah, to some degree, it's a function of age or changing conditions in the river. Um, there, there is an aging process, you know, as you have these sand boils and various high water events, you know, a little of that foundation is, uh, uh, is eroded. And, uh, you know, over time, there is some deterioration. And of course, there's a constant maintenance that needs to be done on pump stations and relief wells and other systems that are related. Uh, you see drainage districts, di uh, ditches that come from behind the levees mm -hmm. that take care of the, the interior drainage behind the levees because we have to find a way to get that back into the river mm -hmm. now that we have the levees blocking the way. So they need to be maintained. There's a lot of maintenance in there and there are uh, uh, levee districts that do a pretty good job uh, that are in place now uh, to do that. So now we come to the really serious part. So. 07, they make this critical decision, 08, 09, and now people begin to realize what? What's the consequence of all, besides rebuilding mm -hmm. and the cost of that, what is the consequence of having this designation about the possibility of flooding in the American bottoms? Well, that's where the real problems come in. Um, FEMA, as I said, is redrawing all these maps. Um, they have issued preliminary maps last July, July of 09. Um, and uh, they are now talking about issuing final maps sometime next year. They've delayed this process a couple of times as we've objected and filed appeals and all of that. 